Divine Truth Assistance Group. Group assistance sessions putting principles of divine truth into action. This recording is from the Developing My Loving Self group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the creation of my facade question and answer presentation, Jesus answers questions from the audience about the material covered in the previous presentation, The Creation of My Facade. Recorded on the 4th of June 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Can you feel yourself? Can you feel how relieved you are? Interesting, that. Interesting that finding out truth about terror actually feels you, makes you feel relieved. Huh. Amazing. <laughs> Funny thing about fear is that knowing more about it actually helps you feel happier about it. Interesting. All right, so now we're going to focus on the Q&A about the creation of my facade. Now, I'm about 15 minutes over, so probably what I'll have to do, um, if we, is it okay with all of you to finish about 4.30? Um, which will mean we would have to cut about 10 minutes off of this uh, last session. Okay, fire away. Um, can we start with you, Paige? And then up to Mike behind. AJ is... You'll need to stand up, Paige. Oh, sorry, go Thanks. on. Is my choice and my refusal to feel the terror and the original pain mm -hmm. that was absorbed at conception... Well, it's not wasn't my just choice. absorbed at conception, is it? Because it's a, it's a process, isn't it? that was engaged by your parents, yep. which began at conception and continued, and it's probably still continuing now for the majority of you. Like any of you still have parents on earth, and even those of parents who have passed, many of them haven't learnt the truth yet. So they're still continuing the same cycle with you. Yep. Okay. Um, my question is, is my refusal to feel those two things mm -hmm which then creates the facade and then my addictions and everything else to avoid those two things. Mm -hmm. Is that what creates the majority of my current soul condition? Um, it's the sin that you engage avoiding, avoiding. those two things yeah. that certainly creates a worsening soul condition, certainly. Because yeah. Yeah. every new sin you engage in justification of avoiding terror and avoiding pain causes more pain and a degradation of the condition. Yeah. So it's like, a, it's like a, a, a wheel going around, a snowball effect, if you like, going around, worsening and worsening and worsening, and we're in the cycle because we're not seeing what causes us to make the choice to make it worse. And the choice to make it worse is driven by those two things, the avoidance of the motions of pain that exist inside of us and the refusal to feel the terror about feeling pain and those two decisions cause us to every time we make a decision between something that's happening in our external environment it's being made only to go for pleasure and to avoid pain and every time we make that choice we don't care what the subsequent results are whether they're loving or unloving yep. whether they're truthful or untruthful we just care about whether the terror gets suppressed and the pain gets suppressed and whether we get some pleasure out of it. Yeah. That's all we care about. So, so we're driven only by those motivations. Yeah. And, okay. and, and, and we're even cleverer than that, Paige, because what we do is we tell ourselves that we're not driven by those motivations. Because <coughs> we say to ourselves, yeah. I'm a nice person. I'm really a good person. I want to believe I'm a good person because one of the terror, the global terror that I have is that I'm, I'm not. not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we'll see why that's the case later. Yeah. But, but, you know, I'm terrified that I'm not a good person, so I want to believe that I am. So a lot of my motivations are about reinforcing to myself that I am while I'm still engaging a whole heap of more sin. From God's perspective, degrading my condition. Mm. So it'd be better to feel... Or start with, yeah, I'm it is, not. It is far better to feel, yeah. <laughs> far better to feel both of those things than it is yeah. to do anything else. Yeah. And, and this is, but, but that feeling has to actually be a feeling in you. You can't, 
manufacture that state of saying it's better. You can't tell yourself intellectually that it is better. You have to get to the point of feeling that it's better before you'll actually address it. We'll talk more about the deconstruction process later. But you have to actually get to the point where you feel it's better yeah. to feel your terror and feel it's better to feel your pain than do all the other things. Mm -hmm. And when you do do that, that's when you, make prog that's when you start progressing to becoming your loving self. Mm -hmm. And will your law of attraction, God's law of attraction, actually <coughs> show that to you, that you're starting to do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's very important that all of God's laws are operating for the purpose of helping the redemption of your soul from this state of creating sin to the state of no longer doing so. So all of God's laws are helping you, assisting you. The problem is all of man's laws, and I use the term laws loosely because we're really talking about society's general concept and, and parents' general concept. And to that to you, that is law. Because remember, to the child, that's law. right? And we're still really running around like little five-year-olds, still doing what law, society and parent-based emotions demand of us. We see parent and society-based emotions as our law. We do. And that's the law we engage. So their law is avoid that at all costs, avoid the terror at all costs, avoid the pain at all costs. That's their law. So that's what we run around doing. Thank you. Yeah, sad, eh? It's really sad. Uh, we were back up at Mike first and then down with Peter on this side. So up at Mike first. Oh, sorry. Yep, sorry. <coughs> Trying to understand suicide, mm -hmm. you said in the past it's a lot of anger and rage, but is yep. there also the terror? Um, no, I've, I've found it's more anger and rage. <laughs> um, is... When a person wants to suicide, they have a desire that their addictions are not getting met. So they have addictions of wanting people to, that they want people to meet and nobody around them is meeting them. So whenever your addictions are not met, you revert to anger-based behaviour. The worst anger-based behaviour towards yourself is suicide. The worst anger-based behaviour towards another person is to murder them or torture them and then murder them. Right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, we were down at Peter, down here. So our emotional refusal to feel the pain and terror as a nation, for instance, <coughs> as Australians, this mm -hmm. is how, this is why our politicians behave the way they do. We literally create our politicians and the yes. behaviour of the country. Yes, we do. From that. Yeah. We even go to war because of it. We want them to go to war because of it. Even though you think you don't, you do. Like you think you don't because that helps you prevent one of your terrors, you see. You think we think we don't have a lot of feelings that we actually have. Like what we're getting in politics and what we're getting in the economy and what we're getting in the medical profession is all the result of our own actions and the attractions that those actions attract. So our first step is if we want to change the way our politicians behave, we've got to change. Got to change this. When, when you stop being motivated by terror, they will stop advertising and putting policies that are motivated by your terror. Do you understand that? Of course they're going to stop. If you say, no, we're not going to put up with your fear mongering anymore, <laughs> right? and you actually felt it, they, would not, you would, they wouldn't do what the f your fear is currently dictating for them to do. They'll change. And they'll change slowly but automatically as a result because they know I'm going to get voted out of power if I work on people's fears. Now what happens is they work on your fears and they get voted in yeah. power. What do you think Trump's doing at the moment in the USA? Manipulating people's fears. Of course, it's a, it's a powerful way to control people. You manipulate their fears. Right? If you don't have any more fear to manipulate and you're only being driven by love and truth and you make a decision to vote and you go, wow, there's no one I can vote for here, I'm not voting for them and I'm not voting for them because they're only manipulating me by fear. Eventually there'll be even candidates who, who actually, lo and behold, have dealt with their fear and they walk around telling a whole different story and will you vote for one of those candidates? Most probably. 
if you have dealt with your own fear. But you're not going to vote for them if you haven't. You're going to vote for the one who supports it. Who feeds your fear. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes you feel that way. So yeah, everything in society, medical profession, you know, we, we, we say, oh, this group of people and that people group of people, they're doing this and it's so wrong. No, they're just doing what your fear, your terror that you don't want to feel dictates. That's all they're doing. And if globally, collectively, our, we no longer had terror that dictated these particular things, then they wouldn't even have any power at all. You know, so what do you notice on telly? Every advert, man, there's so many adverts, isn't there? It's just like, <laughs> I don't know how anybody watches telly. Drives me bonkers. <laughs> Aside from the occasional funny advert, drives you bonkers. <laughs> because that's really all you're watching. You've got to have a funny one here and there. But, the, but if you look at most of the adverts, right, for example, for painkillers, it's all fear, isn't it? And then you look at the advert for cleaners, you know, like household cleaners. Fear. Germs, this, germs, that, germs, this, family, that, protect family, this, whatever, whatever, right? And then, and then you look at, uh, you know, adverts for uh, other adverts, lawyers, what's that about? Getting, after you've feared something, getting a result of some kind. And then, you, you know, you examine most of the adverts. They're all driven by fear. And even the ones like, adverts like, um, have this car, is usually driven by, this car's cool, if you haven't got it. You're not cool. So you're afraid of not being cool. So you have to get the car, right? And, and it's just like, it just goes on and on and on as to how much of our society is driven by this underlying two, two emotions. Because it also feels like there's a feeling these days, oh, well, we can't do anything because we've only got one vote or we, yeah, like, yeah, we, we can't make the change. Whereas yeah, you, this way we can start the change. Yeah, if you want to be a politician who's got rid of fear, I'll vote for you. I don't vote for anybody at the moment because nobody has. But if someone come along who had, I'd definitely vote for them. And if they started telling the truth, if they actually told the truth, and they were honest and open about the truth. See, we're even afraid of truth, aren't we, too, in this place because the facade's all about avoiding truth, right? Isn't it? So we're afraid of truth as well. So, so a politician comes along and tells you the truth. Yeah, we went over budget because we overspent. You go, oh, it's all terrible, it's terrible, terrible, you get rid of them, right? He just told you the truth. And you want to get rid of him. Why is that? Like, I feel like, oh, what a refreshing change. A guy actually says what he did. I might keep him on. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just amazing how, how infiltrates all of our decisions and choices and infiltrates society. You, you can see that if, if we had somebody, if we, and this requires personal change, obviously, we need to become what we want. I know it's a funny saying, but a new agey type saying, but we do need to, to become what we want the world to be. You want the world to be without fear. See, most people don't recognise when they say, we need to become what we want the world to be, they don't realise that really what we want the world to be is without fear. And most people don't choose to become that. And what I'm suggesting is that God's going to, if you want a relationship with God and you want to get educated by God, you're going to have to become it. Because this is a choice. To retain this is a choice. It's now in us. What I'm saying to you is you need to have compassion for the fact that it's in you. But it got created in you. Your own choices too enabled it. But, but it's now in you. Let's have compassion for the fact that it's there. Like, let's not ignore it. It's there. The, fear, the terror is there and the pain is there. Let's not ignore them. But let's see that we can actually release them. They are our, cre pardon me, our creations. God is not going to remove from me my own creations. Because to do so would be an act out of harmony with my will. So, so God is only going to assist me to remove what I want to remove. So I'm going to have to want to remove these things. And I can't remove them except if I... Feel them. So I'm going to have to feel them, choose to feel them at some point. Next door to Eloisa and then in front to Justin. Thanks. I just want to know um, some more about what this global terror is because I can feel 
a lot of stuff, but as you have been saying, we don't really know what it is. So Why do you want to know more? Because um, if I don't know about it, how can I feel it? Ah, see, there's, a, there's the error straight there. Ah, oh. because I you, can just need to feel it. You can feel emotions you know out. nothing about. A child feels emotions it knows nothing about. Yeah, true. So you can choose to feel emotions you know nothing about. Yeah. You don't have to know about it. In fact, knowing about it is a part of the problem, is it makes you not feel. Because I'm just um, wanting to justify or get away from my fear. Yeah, why do you want to know about it? Because it makes the fear, you think, it makes the fear go down, but it doesn't. No. You know what makes the fear go down? Feeling it. Feeling it. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. That's what makes it go down. Yeah. So I'm just going to have to feel it. You're just going to have to feel it. But we don't want to feel it, so what do we finish up doing? Question, question, question about it, hoping we, and, and we will explain more about some basic core to it, you know, because there are flavours that we'll discuss later. Yeah. But we're not doing it for the purpose of helping you avoid it. No. Does that make sense? And, and this is the thing our questions about our fear are frequently driven by the desire to avoid it rather than to feel it. And a child does not need to know its fear before it feels it. A child does not need to know any emotion pain of any kind, like sadness, grief, shame, whatever. It just feels it and lets itself feel it without judgment, without condemnation, without any of that facade in place. Remember, we're using these denial techniques to avoid. And part of informing us sometimes, particularly when we're trying to be informed about emotion, is really all about the fact that we don't want to feel emotion and we prefer to talk about it yeah. rather than feel it. Yeah, definitely. And all of us are in that trap while we have it. We're, we're, <laughs> we want to talk about it and not feel it. The key is to be willing to feel it. Now, so the real question then becomes, how do I develop a willingness to feel it? <laughs> yeah. Like, how do I develop an aspiration to feel something that I just have everything screaming at me to not feel? Yeah. Isn't that the real question? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That would be a better question. <laughs> do I? <laughs> do I? Do I? <laughs> okay. Well, we, this is what we're going to spend the middle two days about. How do okay. you do that? What do you do? What, what kinds of things are you going to need to do? And the very first thing you're going to need to do is what we're going to talk to you about tomorrow morning. And that's accept it. All right. <laughs> you're going to need to accept this is how it is. And that has to be an emotional acceptance. It can't be an intellectual one. So at some point in your future, you're going to have to accept that this is actually in you and you will accept it once you feel it. You will start to accept that it's there in you when you feel it. Does that make sense? But I'm not going to accept it until I actually feel it. So there's pretty much nowhere to go except to feel it. (laughs) Ah, God's so clever sometimes. (laughs) Isn't God making a system where you end up the only way forward is to do exactly what God <laughs> wants you to. <laughs> well, nothing else is working. <laughs> and what do we do? We manoeuvre and weasel around and try to negotiate and, you know, we're into curves all the time, right? <laughs> around and around and around we go. But God's leading us to a place. God's leading us to a place to feel it. Yeah. 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 It's like that through the mist thing, and you're saying, "Would you ever go back to Afro?" He's like, "No, no, of course he wouldn't." Can't. Yeah. Once once you get through this, your life will change substantially, as you can imagine. As you can imagine, you're no longer driven by terror anymore, or the avoidance of the feeling of terror anymore. You can feel terror. You you you're able to feel it. So you're not driven by the avoidance of it anymore. Very powerful place. You you know, someone put a gun to your head and. As you do something after that, you won't, unless it was loving. <laughs> yeah, but it's highly unloving to be driven by a gun to your head. <laughs> so under those circumstances, you still might go, "Well, hang a sec, I'm happy to do it." But you don't have to put a gun to my head to do it. <laughs> maybe do it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Justin. Uh, I was going to ask if the <coughs> development of faith would help. You with that refusal of the terror. It is I- incredibly essential to develop faith. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about the deconstru- deconstruction more, but I can't say enough about the quality of faith. 
it, it, it is essential to have faith firstly in God's goodness, in God and in God's goodness, but also to have faith in the way God made us. So, so it's not about having courage really to feel. It's about having faith in the way God made me. God made me to feel. So I feel. Does that make sense? Yeah, I wasn't sure if the faith would grow once you went through that. Of course faith will grow once you go through it. But you need to, to even desire to go through it, even to develop an aspiration to go through it, it's going to require faith, the development of faith. Yeah. So okay. faith is all about um, letting yourself feel about God's goodness and what God wants us to do even. But the key is to reflect upon and, and reflect upon God's character and nature. Does God want us to carry around our fear for the rest of our existence? No. Did God actually even create an environment where fear is necessary? No. No. He created an environment where truth is necessary, but not where fear is necessary. Once you know the truth, there's nothing to fear. In other words, if I know the truth about the law of gravity, I don't fear it anymore. Look, most of you don't fear the law of gravity, except when you're just about to... Fall off my bike. To yeah. break it. Yeah, <laughs> That's when you fear it. You know what the consequence is going to be, right? And, and this is the thing, is once we know the truth, we carry on our lives without fear. So, so yeah, the, the four tools, remember, I didn't mention them in the previous presentation, but they are essential for our, even now, accepting the facade, they're essential to develop an even aspiration to even want to see these four tools will be needed. But the, but the greatest of the tools is faith. Yeah, really important quality. Drives you through many what you classify as feelings and emotions that you would otherwise not probably feel. Mm. Okay, if we, we weren't on it, we finished with our people on this side. Let's go to David and then Amber on this side. So, Dave, just. Um. When we create facades, especially as an adult, mm -hmm. do we create them laterally next to each other or do we actually put a facade on top of another facade? We do both. We do whatever is necessary. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's, it's driven by whatever is necessary. So we do whatever is necessary. So with some people, there's a facade. You know, interacting with some people, we need a facade upon a facade, so that's what we do. Interacting with one group of people compared to another group of people, we need a different facade, so we create lateral facades. We do whatever is necessary. And, and whatever is necessary will be determined by whenever our terror gets triggered or whenever our pain is getting triggered, we do something to put a wrap around it, protect it, suppress it and keep it under wraps. Whatever is necessary. Are the adult facades that we create more like addictions and that they don't need to be processed as much as like an actual causal emotion? Uh, good or, question. Or yes, probably. Our adult choices that we've made mm. are easier to get rid of but but when we start digging down into these adult choices, you'll find there are some child like childish beliefs and false beliefs and false definitions of love that drive those choices. And they are much more difficult to get rid of if we have yet to re re release our terror. We'll never get to this stage, probably. Or we'll try to circumnavigate, and this, many of you have been trying that, circumnavigating your terror so that you can get to the pain. Your pain is never going to be fully released that way, ever, because it's always getting released through the emotion of terror. You're never going to fully release it anyway. And it's highly likely, actually, when you're doing that, that you're up here still, not, not down in this area. So, yeah. So if we're trying to deconstruct a facade right now, then all we're going to do is create another facade if we don't actually want to feel that terror. Correct. So just, okay. Correct. Mm. And many of you Thank have done you. that with me. You've gone from, you said, oh, I've got to deconstruct my facade, so you deconstructed your facade, and then you just go and create another one. A one that makes you feel better about yourself and makes you feel like you're doing something now and so forth. And I keep saying to you, you're not doing anything yet. And you go, yes, I am, yes, I am. This is proof that I am. And I go, no, 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 you're not, because you haven't changed. And you go, yes, I have, yes, I have. And I go, no, no, no. Right? But it's just a generation of another facade to suit the interaction. Does that make sense? That's all it is.
just like taking off some clothing and put on a different thing and then you're someone else. But yeah, exactly like still that. Still same underneath. Same underneath, yeah. yeah. To truly deconstruct the facade, uh, as Igor once said to me about one of his illustrations, I Igor is really good with metaphors, and he says, facade is like an eggshell. When you really crack it, all the gooey yolk comes out. <laughs> Very true. And, and, and many of us have avoided that process of cracking it, so we just create another one. We swap one for another, rather than going into the gooey, the gooey stuff that's inside of it, you know. Thank you. And if we come down to Emma. Um, so the most effective way to help the people around us mm -hmm. and the global emotional refusal of pain and terror, would that be to take self-responsibility and just focus on yourself doing this and that will have a ripple effect on everyone and everything around you yes it does yes it does because i feel like i've been waiting for people to catch up and maybe do it with me yes which is a part of the global emotion of terror global emotion of terror is screaming at you that if you deal if you don't if you feel your terror and release it then you'll be in a state where you don't have terror and everybody else still does and what will they do they'll attack you so that's one of parts of your terror the fact that you're going to get attacked by feeling it so so if you just focus on yourself and yep. do it yep it's going to be really good for everyone else yep yeah really good most effective way yes really good for you too <laughs> really good for you too you know see many of us don't think that way but it, it is really good for us it, it, you know there's a big difference between waking up every day in dread and doing a whole leap of things that are sin because you're in dread and so forth than actually waking up each day happy to be alive and happy to engage in what you're doing today and enjoying your life and not being afraid of what other people think of you or what they're going to say about you doing what you're doing and you know like imagine the difference it's hard to imagine the difference when we're just we, all we're going is we're going no people will attack me that's going to be bad people will attack me that'll be bad but the reality is like I've been attacked less since I've dealt my terror than I did before then. Interesting. Why is that? Ah, oh, because God's laws support me dealing with my terror and you know, all my beliefs of what I had before then, I've started to find were un untrue. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. If we go back to Graham and then f forward to Felix. Um. Is there any benefit in the sort of things that traditional societies do where they might have rites of passage where um, people experience, choose to experience pain and discomfort and stuff like that? Does that help them um, deal with their fear of pain and stuff like that at all? No, because most of the time the motivation for it is to fit in with a group of people, which is actually part of the terror itself. Not fitting in is part of the terror. So the rites of passage are all about becoming a member of the group. So they're all driven by a terror that's out of harmony with what we're trying to achieve, which is to remove ourselves from the group that we're trying to become a member of. It, it, like, it seems to me that a lot of the more traditional societies have a different attitude to pain and discomfort than what we do. Uh, I don't feel that they do, Graham. I feel that many of them use pain as a measure of a person's manliness or, or some other quality, which is still about terror. So it's, it, it's just a different form of avoidance that they're using. They've yeah. created a different facade. Yeah. So it's a way of getting the approval of the environment. And, and this terror is all about approval of the environment. We want the approval of the environment. That's why it's there. So would, would there, there wouldn't be any benefit for us to experiment with things like just allowing ourselves to get wet and cold or something like that and things like that? Well, that's using our willpower now to try to trigger a terror-based experience. And it's not going to be beneficial. Remember, we've said that it's got to be a will-based desire to experience this terror. And my, my personal experience has been it's only when I've, like I've done a whole heap of things that, you know, the average person would be terrified about, but at the end of the day, none of that has helped me feel it. What's helped me feel it is by developing my will to feel it. Yeah. Thank so you. So you're better off developing, working through your aspirations, working through, remember we talked in our first group about aspirations and the kinds of aspirations we need. You know, so firstly, develop the aspiration of faith with faith to have faith, develop the aspiration to focus on truth and so forth, develop the four tools, just an aspiration to have them. 
The second thing then is to develop an aspiration to start allowing yourself to see what's really there, what's really going on, what motivations are really happening, and particularly the motivations surrounding our terror. So then you would do it with the real things that are really going on for you rather than manufacturing little um, pain-inducing or discomfort-inducing things. Yes, and actually it's actually out of harmony. We'd love to manufacture more pain in order to address something. So, yeah, you wouldn't choose to do that if you, if you actually loved yourself. Yep. Yep, good question. Um, Felix was next, so just in front. Oh, Felix is madly writing uh, while he's trying to question. I've got two questions, all right? Fire. Yep. First one was um, uh, the relationship between facade and addiction um, because, yep. oh, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> yep, so our facade is all about lies, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, you, yep. You think about your facade, it's really, a bit, it's really lying to self and the world. You're telling yourself and you're telling the world that what you really want is not what you really want and so forth. But your addictions, are, you know, when you start engaging addictions, they show the truth of what you really feel, that you have all these needy holes that you want filled and you'll do anything to fill them. Does that make yeah. sense? But is one, uh, drive, uh, sorry, is one driving the other? No, they're like, does... Well, no, what's driving all of it is these two things. The yeah. avoidance of my pain and the avoidance of my emotion but of terror. Isn't my... Because f- the way I feel is my facade is, is, is there to try to do everything it can to both avoid the terror and instead get the pleasure of the addiction. Correct. So it's, it's basically then the... It f- feels to me like my facade is driven by my addictions in a way, or by my fear and my addiction. Isn't that right? No, your facade is even created because of these two things. Yeah. And so all of what the facade then creates... So you think of your facade as a part of yourself. Yeah. Like, so it's part of your real self. So you mean it's like, it's like the part of me that's doing... Ev- like the hurt self is saying... The hurt self is this pain. Yeah, I'm, I'm terrified, avoid my pain, avoid my pain. And the, the facade's going, okay, I'll avoid your pain. Uh, these addictions will do it, Spot lies on. will do it. Yeah, we talk about that. Tomorrow. Do, that'll do it. Okay. We talk about how oh, right. we talk about tomorrow how your um, your pain is really like a dictator, a, con- a controller, a manipulator. Mm. Your pain is doing that. Your facade is just following its demands. It's like a servant. It's your humble and faithful servant. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Following yeah. whatever you wish to do. Yeah. And the facade is there because the dictator says, "Do this, avoid pain, and." Refuse to feel yep. terror, and so facade says, "No worries, my my." Yeah, my I kind of realised like that <laughs> recently. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Um, and second was you said um, just before a minute ago that you were attacked less when you were in when you got rid of some terror. Yeah. Um, I was sh- kind of surprised. Shocked. <laughs> Why would you be shocked? Because <laughs> at the moment the belief is that if you follow God's laws, it's going to be worse for you. Yeah. That's your belief. It's not true. Would you be able to give us uh, a personal example of, of, of that? Uh, yeah. Like, um, I was yeah. terrified of, like, m- one of my major motivations was to please people all the time. Mm. Right? So, so I'd run around pleasing people all the time. I, I'd run myself into the ground pleasing mm. people, you know, doing what other th- things for other people. I'd get the reason why I got sick every month was because of that, actually, that one desire. So there I was, out of harmony with law, not loving myself, mm-hmm. driven by terror that other people, you know, if I don't please other people, then I'd be seen to be a bad person or whatever. And so I'd just please, 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 please. That's my addiction. Pleasing them makes me feel better about myself. Okay. I deal with the terror. I don't have to please anybody anymore. Right? Yeah. All of a sudden, all of my sicknesses go away. I, I go from being sick every month to not being sick for 10 years. Mm-hmm. So that tells me, oh, interesting bit of feedback there. I'm actually more in harmony with God's laws now and as a result I'm not breaking as many and as a result I get some good outcomes. Okay. Right? But so not only that, also I get attacked less from people because before I was so much into pleasing people that they would all know that I'm into pleasing them. 
And yeah. so whenever I didn't please yeah. them, they would dump on me like nobody's business. You know, it's like attack here, attack there, attack here, attack there. Once they knew that I wouldn't please them, except under certain circumstances, they didn't attack yep, me anymore. That makes sense, yeah. Isn't mm. that interesting? Before I was feeding their addiction to get whatever they wanted from me, and then after after I dealt with that, they realised that they couldn't do that with me, and so they didn't bother. They just went and did it with somebody yeah. else. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get attacked as much. Yeah. No, I I noticed that with you, like that you feel like you can't get away with things with AJ where you can with other people. Yeah. 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 But also, many yeah. of you, as a result, don't attack me either. Yeah. This is fantastic. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> But it's a yeah. part of the law in operation. Mm. The law, yeah. the law is I'm no longer giving you. So if you look at it from a vortex perspective, there's a vortex coming out of me before that I would satisfy a person's addictions. I, I love that. Ex I love that metaphor. It's exactly what it feels like. And their vortex Especially was they, the would sound you make. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it's like. <laughs> so their vortex was that they would accept me yeah. pandering to them because you know they felt superior to me or whatever. Yeah. Now as soon as I cut that off, like they for a little bit have that demand and then they realise what's the point. Yep. It's pointless wanting AJ to feed an addiction and just go somewhere else if you want an addiction yeah. feed. So, so just in summary, the facade is like the, the master, I mean sorry, the slave of the master which is the hurt self. No, no, the pain is the master. Ah, the pain is the master. Which we'll talk about My more The facade tomorrow. is a slave and the addiction is the one of the solutions. Yes. Okay. The, the, yeah. the slave says, yeah, yeah. I'll just that engage this addiction. Would that make your pain go away? And your pain goes, yeah, that feels better now. So yeah. Okay, thanks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Many of you have been thinking that your facade is the problem. Yeah? No, your facade is the effect of the problem. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. The facade is the effect of the real problem, the avoidance of pain and the refusal of terror. That's the problem. And your facade is just doing what that demands. Just obeying. Your facade is she who must be obeyed. <laughs> What's that show from that show? She who must be obeyed? Yeah, Rumpole of the Bailey, that's right. She who must be obeyed, his wife who must be obeyed, he was referring to, but I'm referring to these two emotions must be obeyed, must be obeyed. So your facade goes around saying, yes, I obey, I obey, I obey. I'll do whatever is needed. And your, your facade is even busy obeying everybody else's ones as well. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's like not only will you obey your own demand to avoid, but somebody else has a demand to avoid and you obey that too. It's like how crazy is that? Like, so we're running around obeying, obeying, not only our own demands to avoid these two things, but also obeying everyone else's demands to avoid these two things. It's no wonder we feel like we're tired and no energy and exhausted and so forth, is it not? If we go up to, um, if we come down to Phoebe actually on this side. Um, it seems like some people, myself included, have more of a facade than others, if that makes sense, or have more different facades, or I think they're just different. Is it just different? It yeah. just feels like some people might just feel more real, or like um, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. But all that indicates is that they've either been allowed to be themselves more than you have, or that they've chosen to be themselves more than you have. That's all it means. Okay, so yeah. So it's not really, a di like they may not have different amounts of terror or different types of terror that would cause that? Of course. Or, yeah. I guess, yeah, everyone's yeah. going to have different. Yeah, you've got so many flavours, it's like the spices on a rack, you know. <laughs> Chili terror, oh, you know, and <laughs> ginger terror, not so bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, if we go to Tara on this side. Um, when there's so much um, self-talk going on with um, comparison with others and self-criticism, self-judgment, is that just a complete block to the terror? Yeah, that's one of the techniques. So that's that's a technique when you just because I understand that self-punishment is a no go, like it doesn't go anywhere. 
But yeah. what about if you just let yourself feel how much self-hatred you have? Self-hatred is a technique too. Okay. They're all techniques. Self, what does self-hatred do for you, Tara? It does something. Well, it feeds one of these, one of these, right? What does it do? Well, I understand it stops me from feeling um, what it other does. people really feel, feel towards me. Yes, by how does it do that? Well, if I'm punishing and hating myself first, then I'm not going to feel the pain of other people hating me. True, but also it's highly unlikely that they will attack you because they look at you and they go, poor Tara, she's already punishing herself enough. How do they know that, though? Because they can feel you're doing it. Okay. Can't they? Um, yeah, I suppose. I suppose because it's so caught up in my head and the stories that are going on in my head, I don't see what that other people are feeling about me. Correct. And that's the case for the majority of us because we're so involved in our own refusal of terror and so involved in our own refusal of pain that we forget that everyone around us is doing the same thing with different things, with different emotion. And, and we're not analysing their behaviour because we're too busy not understanding our own. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so it's where we become, like you were saying earlier, detuned, basically not able to feel other people's um, emotions yeah. at all. Exactly. We're in this place here, and, and this is what I found, is once I worked through that, I was now able to sense other people's emotions. So it's actually one huge benefit. You can now feel what other people actually feel. Before then, you can't feel anything. So I didn't know. I didn't even know what I felt. Before then, you don't even know what you feel. It's like, it's like you know, I remember I went to a psychologist once because I was worried about, you know, where I was headed and, and sat down with him and he said, like, he was asking me, uh, you know, what if, what if somebody came into your house and they started attacking your two sons? What would you do? And I'm just thinking, thinking. <laughs> uh, uh, and, I'd, you know, say a few things. He says, no. He said, no, maybe I'd better ask you this. What would you feel? And I'm going, feel? What would I feel? I had no idea what I would feel. None whatsoever. So the story's actually stopping me from really feeling. I'm just staying in my head. And that's... Well, it's an addiction. That's the soul screaming, like None. you mentioned before, the soul screaming out. No, while you're feeding your addictions, Tara... It's impossible to get to this. That's the point of the addiction. Yeah. So if one addiction is to self-punish, that's the addiction you feed. If one addiction is to punish others, then that's the addiction you feed. For many of us, it's both. You know, mm. Self-punish in some situations and punish others in other situations. Yeah. We do both because that covers over the terror somehow. I punish you, you will stop highlighting my terror. If I punish me, you won't attack me, which might be part of my terror, mm. of terror of being attacked. And it's like self-blame, self-pity. Self-pity is another mm. huge one, right, that we use. Yeah. Oh, pity myself, isn't it? So I, oh, I can't do anything about it. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. Right. All this self-pity and what's it for? It's just to avoid the fact that it's actually your responsibility to feel terror and it's your responsibility to feel pain. And there you go, oh, it's still terrible for me, it's still terrible for me. And what's that all to do? Just avoid the fact that you don't want to do it. You know, there's so many emotions that are all emotions of self-delusion, emotions that we create purposefully in order to avoid these two things. Powerful, huh? Yeah. We're so clever, aren't we? <laughs> and we're weaselly, manipulative, conniving mm. little crap pieces. <laughs> that, you know, in this place, you know, that's where we are. We're just trying to get whatever will satisfy us, right? Trying to get whatever will satisfy our avoidance, whatever will satisfy our desire for pleasure at all costs. That's all we're focused on, really. And, and the main reason why is because we want to avoid the terror and avoid feelings of pain, emotional pain in particular. So just making um, that conscious choice to stop the stories and then feel into your no, body. No, you can't make a conscious choice to do it. That's what I said earlier to Graham and what I've said earlier to someone else over here. But how do you get conscious from Conscious choice is using your willpower. But how do you, you get from being in your head to, to feeling what's in your you body? You have to develop an aspiration to feel oh, what's yeah. in your body. Okay. You have to go through a process yeah. to allow yourself to be emotionally open. Very important to understand that. Yeah. You're not going to do it by using your willpower. You're not going to do it by making conscious choices. You are unconscious, let's face it. You're yeah. madly going around going, 
give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. At the soul level, you're unconscious. So develop consciousness at the soul level. That's all about firstly develop an aspiration and then working through the... And thing. faith too. Yeah. And faith and other things, but all has to be in the soul, mm. not as a part. It has to be a part of your emotional state, not as a part of your intellect. You've said that hundreds of times. I'm so <sighs> sorry that we're yes. still asking you the same stuff. And why? Why? Why do we keep asking the because same stuff? Because we don't really want to hear the truth. Correct. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. That's why you mm. keep asking the same questions over and over again. You, many of you have tried asking me the same question 25 different <laughs> ways, and I've said the same answer every time. And surely you're bored with my answer by now, but, but it still goes on because this is screaming at us, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Come forward to our one. Do you always have to go through the facade to feel that? Because sometimes it just comes up without anything. Yes, uh, these things, because they are so strong, are going to poke their, rear up their heads at all sorts of times in your life. And, and particularly when you haven't created a particular facade or addiction to manage that situation. And what most people do is they, these, these emotions rear their head up at a moment and then we're busily trying to find out what facade, what addiction have I, have I currently got to, to suppress it. So we go, you know, like a, I said to her, like it's a selector, you know, it's like, boom, 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 oh, that one will work, dang, I do that. And, and most of the time it's like, boom, try that, no, boom, try that, no, boom, try that, no. You know, we try one after the other after the other. And when we've exhausted all our standard ones, what are we left with? You go and create another one for that particular situation in that particular environment and there comes another facade just being created in order to avoid the terror that just got triggered in that situation but you can just actually just feel it you can and you had but most of us don't have faith that we can right and so when you woke up with dread did you ever just feel the dread no i avoided no, it, it like the rest of you do yeah. It was only when I went through some f process, this actual terror, and in the first group I actually described the pro some of the processes I went through uh, as a part of the, um, the feedback sessions, um, described some of the processes of what it's going to look like feeling the terror. And, and to be honest with you, the whole group got pretty freaked out, <laughs> <laughs> which is why they don't want to do it. right? Because what does happen to me sometimes is... I do wake up feeling like terror and I feel that's a living bit, in it. Yeah. A little bit and you know, I'm not very Yeah, it's what you're going to find is that terror and a little bit this is where you think you can manage it, you see? So it's all about managing you see you see, sometimes when you hear me speak you go, Oh well I've got to get into this terror. I know what I'll do. I'll just do a little bit today and a little bit tomorrow, and a little bit the next day, and hopefully after a year or so of that, then I'll be gone. And I'm saying to you, it won't be gone until the emotion overwhelms you. And when you're managing it, your emotion's not overwhelming you. Bloody feels like it at the time. No, it's not. Because you're going to feel totally different. You're going to feel like you're going nuts, and you're going to feel quite... You're in management control of it. Okay. Yep. Which is what most people are in. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Straight back to Sherry. Uh, when we came back in, you said like most people are feeling relieved from hearing this, yeah. and I don't feel relieved. No worries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I understand why, but go on. Um. Yeah, I think. Why don't you feel relieved? You know. Oh, just I feel like that's the direction that I have to go, and there's no other way. And I don't know, what, you know, that's it's you just don't. like bang. It's what there, what okay. the direction? Describe it more fully. <laughs> I'm gonna have to feel this terror that I have inside of me, and yeah. you know, your whole life is governed to not do it. Look, I I remember being a child, being like going, I don't want to feel that terror. Yeah, yeah. So this feels like I've structured my whole life around that. I agree. You have. Let's look at this. I don't want to is really what you said, right? Yeah. 
Now, didn't we talk about that in the first group? Yeah. And what did we say about deconstructing that emotionally? Can you remember? Um, not at the moment, no. Well, how do we get from I don't want to, which is my current soul-based desire, mm. to the desire we know we should have, <laughs> which yeah. is what, what's our desire sh we should have? I want to, so we'll just mm. write that down. I want to. And I'm often stuck in this dilemma. Like, How do I get from there to there? Use my will. Well, no, see, Graham asked that very question in the first group. You remember? Those of you who watched that stuff that Graham asked questions about? He asked that very question, how do I get from I don't want to to I want to on, on, any, on any subject? Is it feeling how much I don't want to? That, that is important. That's one of the first steps. Mm. Feeling and why you don't want to? Yeah. Another step. But can you see you even need an aspiration to feel that you don't want to and an aspiration to feel that why you don't want to? Mm. You need to develop aspirations in each regard. Mm. Right? You need to see some benefits. Mm. Truth, truth, the four, the four tools, what are they? Truth, action. Faith, truth, action, and um, humility or emotion is how you get from there to there. Mm. Isn't it? You're going to have to have some faith that you can get from there to there. You're going to have to work through different things. You're going to have to develop some aspirations which all come from your soul. It's all emotional. Mm. It's going, you're going to have to want to do those things. And if you don't want to, that's fine. God's not saying to you, you have to, Sherry. Mm. Is he? I, I guess I just feel like because I've put so much into not wanting to feel terror, mm -hmm. that how do I develop that aspiration and to want to feel terror? But I feel like you're saying that makes Well, I agree with you. You have a very, very strongly developed sense of your will to not feel. Yeah. So that tells me you have a strong will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just use that. It's just a... used in the wrong direction. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So, so what you need to do, learn to do is to use it in the right direction. Mm. And if you've got a strong will to deny it, which, by the way, well, and one of the things you'll learn over the next few days is you've got to see the truth of it, you know. At this stage, Sherry believes that, that doing it is much worse than not doing it. Mm. That's what Sherry believes. Many of you are in the same boat, right? The reality is, from God's perspective, you are already experiencing the terrible results of not doing it. Mm. And in fact, if you do it, it will, life will get better, not worse. Mm. But you don't believe that. So that's one of the things you're going to have to have faith in. You're going to yeah. have to develop some faith, aspiration to develop faith in that. See, at the moment, the majority of you believe that not addressing the terror is the best course of action. Mm. That's what you believe. I feel in my, like, I feel like feeling is the way out of this. No, you don't. Well, I don't, f like, I tell myself you that tell in my yourself, head. I and agree. I'm like, this is the only way out. Like, I t you tell yourself, yes. But, but you don't believe it. No. No. Because if you did believe it, you would? Do it. Yes. Mm. So you don't believe it, so I'd work on my beliefs. Yeah. How do you work on your beliefs that are false? Um... I wrote lots of them down. And, and well, you have to feel each one of them, don't you? Right. And release them and at the same time start accepting some truths. Yeah. And you're not accepting the truth and you're not feeling the false beliefs. Mm. So it's going to be difficult. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Now, I'm now over time from what I promised. Um, so I think it's time for us to finish today. We've got uh, tomorrow. You've still got tomorrow to ask more questions, but the important thing today, you can see, you can see that we need to understand our pain, and we need to understand the what it, what's caused it, right? And so, what we've done today is we've talked about the creation of our pain, and we've talked about the creation of our facade, and hopefully now you understand both of them better about what's causing them. What we want to do tomorrow 
is talk to you about what am I going to need, what attitudes are we going to need to accept it like, that it's like this? Why is the acceptance process necessary as a part of our understanding? And this relates to the issue of having an awakening to sin, which we need to you know, discuss in more detail tomorrow. So that's, that'll be our course tomorrow. Hopefully have a good night tonight and able to prepare a little bit for the questions tomorrow by having a look at the outlines, as Mary suggested to you in beforehand. And also, um, for those of you who would like to have some personal feedback session, up the back there are the two pink folders and you can use both folders to write in your personal question that you would like answered. And, and tomorrow, in the course of the morning, I'll select uh, one or two of those to, to answer as a part of the program tomorrow. I'll also tomorrow, I want to give you some group feedback tomorrow. I've already, I already feel what I want to discuss with you about that. So what we'll probably do is have just a half an hour on the personal feedback and another half an hour on the group feedback in the afternoon. And then Mary will be concluding our session tomorrow by doing a summary or a revision of what you've learnt over the, the three primary presentations that have been given to you today and tomorrow morning. So that's our course to tomorrow. Hopefully you go back to, those of you in tents, you go back to not a drowned out place, but rather a place that's comfortable. And I think there'll be better weather tomorrow uh, coming. So, uh, so after that it gets sunny, I think, for most of the week. So hopefully you can enjoy that sun while it's there. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for your time today, guys. Thank you. Enjoy your snooze. <laughs>